Hello, and welcome to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. Today, we are continuing with Sodalite Genuine, and I'm going to be looking at a charcoal drawing by Adolf Appian, uh, French. Just playing with compositions, exploring different landscape motifs, and just having fun learning. So, in front of me, I have about 8 by 10, um, sorry, 8 by 15 sheet of Stonehenge. This is the, which one is this? I think Fawn Toned, which is really nice, really fun. Completely soaked the paper. I'm just going to start getting things in with the Sodalite and the Hake, the Broad tones and play from there. I like the, um, just like this pigment. It's just great. Really not much of a tonal shift when it dries. It has great value range. Really good for studies and makes things very interesting. Gives a nice moody feel as well. Flat up paper out. I'm probably not going to use the hake much for this painting. But we'll see. Here there's some grass coming up right around the edge of a little pond amazing reflections that come down into the pond right in this region. Awesome textured grass. A tree that essentially stops the eye, but he has these interesting shadows that come up and over these uh, rock embankments. So this uh, gentleman was French, but it reminds me a lot of the Northeast. You'd have to travel to northern Louisiana or Arkansas to see scenes like that down here. There's a, a man fishing right off center right here. And there's a different type of tree that comes up. I think that's what initially drew me to exploring him. And I was playing with a pencil looking at it the other day. And he has these kind of essentially like winter dead trees in this region. And we have probably just more upright in this spot. I'll exhaust the hake, the pigment on it, and maybe switch gears. Darker, kind of like blocking in, but playing with just the tones. I was also doing this with um, I mentioned pencil, I'm just sketching, but I what was it yesterday? had some kind of really, really rough handmade paper that um, I was just shading onto with you know, the Strathmore, I think, uh, carbon pencils and just building up tonal values for a landscape like that. And then from there, just putting a little detail on top of it. Almost kind of like a watercolor wash with a um, pen on top. So I did pencil with some pen. Just exploring different representational ways. I think little bits and pieces start getting absorbed into our subconscious. We start just making up an approach for ourselves.
this tree has a nice shadow that comes down, the reflection. I'll move this one over some, move this guy here. I'll adjust them. I don't know how far I'm gonna go with it or how far this how long this video is gonna last. Okay, let's put this guy on the side. Let's see. I have the number one rigger, the number four, and then I've been playing with these oil painting brushes. I think they're synthetic. They're Hobby Lobby, Filbert. They don't do a good job of labeling the different brands or materials on their brushes. But it's easy to grab brushes when they're on sale. essentially just trying to accent some of these guys see what we can do so definitely a different approach than usual we're still wet and wet kind of the idea with these brushes I'm lower in this branch some compared to the, the drawing. But these brushes, they um, don't hold as much water. And with wet and wet, they'll lay the pigment down. But when it's dry, I find that we get very easily more of a dry brush. Almost kind of a difficult dry brush, if that makes sense. Where it makes it... Um, do kind of a lot of applications. This guy lines up with this edge, but he's supposed to be lower, and I lowered that branch, but I'm fine with that. So again, the whole purpose of this is to experiment with different compositions, different texture approaches, um, study this master's tonal values and you know learn from them this is the guy that I was shifting to the left kind of has a birch type tree texture on it a lot of people in watercolor paint those birch trees really well especially with um, the hate brush. It's not something that I've explored that much, but I think that anybody in general can probably develop really nice birch trees. It's probably a good motif to have in your bag of tricks. These ones twist in a weird way, and when I sketched it, it was throwing me off. Now the one comes in front. It almost sits behind right there. For him it looks really great. And I wonder if that was just the artist showing off. Okay. Let me flatten this corner. Once again, I just don't use my fingers with flattening it because the oils you just create areas of resist that cause issues. And in wet and wet, you're definitely going to get uh, fingerprints. Let's see. Grab the hake. I just want these soft hake marks to come down. Just let them diffuse. A bit of 
horizontal mark to represent this land. There's a bump right there. With darker, slightly darker tonal value that hooks around here within the landscape, I think that's meant to bring the eye back around. Start crisping up some edges. Right here, there's a um, a rock that changes the direction it comes up and then gets a little bit flatter. Then behind that, we have foliage and trees. On this side. This is kind of darker valleys that are behind that dead tree. Then we have a far distant ridge. Which passes behind. In fact, I might lift up above and below it it does have a little bit of reflection that comes through, and then we have a dark patch coming back to the land that we're on. Let me grab a Q-tip. That's uh, proved really useful for lifting smaller spots that I have a hard time getting the paper towel in. Though I do have pigment on it, so it's dragging some, just lifting along those edges. I'm not too pleased with that. So hopefully it was just not using a clean Q-tip. Okay. All right, we kind of have the idea in place, and I look through the camera and you can see the layout and the composition. I really like working wet and wet because it gives a more uniform feel to it and uh, very quickly. side has some growth come up. He curves in this direction. I'm putting that slight contour in. comes up. It's interesting how uh, this gentleman created this branch. It came up, it lightens, then it hits darker again. So it catches light, it hits this curve, then it branches off. Initially, besides composition, it was also to look at how some masters had um, approached trees in general. And I just zoomed in on the different portions and played around from there. I'm also going to move relatively quickly throughout from left to right, uh, right to left. Try not to stay in one spot too much. But we do have a rock behind this tree, which comes down out. And I was thinking, usually, in the watercolor, especially the fast and loose, rocks are being 
scraped in. While here, I'm essentially trying to draw or paint the, the rock in. And that made me think of the Chinese brush painting where they had a brush stroke or they have a brush stroke called um, the axe stroke. And it's a dry brush on the side and it looks like essentially like a like a, the way an axe mark would be. here and just get some texture throughout let's just hop over to this side so I mentioned the Uh, the clumps, the growths of uh, grass and weeds, and looking at it, I think you know all this. I don't think any shortcuts were taken, any broad textural mark making in a lot of those areas. I hope this doesn't sound condescending. I think people back then had a lot more time to work on a piece. I know a lot of people have that today in today's day and age, but I'm also somebody who cannot work on something for extended periods of time. shape this other ridge out. It comes up and over. We have that closer one that I talked about. And we'll come into here. That leads into the rock that the fisherman is sitting on dead center is about here so he's like slightly off center I like this because the eye goes to the fisherman because you have the tree here you have the reflection here um, this lines coming over coming over coming over so uh, things are leaning in this tree this tree actually has kind of a push in this direction where it's kind of curved out like a like a thrust coming forward and with compositions where there's something within that the center and it's being enveloped i have difficulty with that it just doesn't look interesting inside the development but here this guy just created such an amazing piece that's part of these studies you'll start hearing me say different things about it and start realizing different things and it makes just um, so much more connect when you sit down and you explore, you think about it, you talk about it, you, you just paint it. Make a lot of lift. Let's take a look at it through the top. So we're 20 minutes in, and our paper's still wet. It's not, um, super dry or super wet but it's it's happening 
I would think we'd be able to get another 20 minutes wet and wet. This is that shadow that, I, well, the shadow happens because of this rise, it looks like. And we start having some marks in here, which I'm just going to move some pigment around. tree that comes up right here I had prepared for its shadow I like to at least make sure a lot of the shadows are in place in the wet and wet or the reflections in the water so, um, it just looks better for me personally and the fast and loose I have the paper towel, which I have everything clumped into my hand, so let's pull out some textures. Let's see if we pull out any textures here. Even come around to this side. Those trees that are uh, dead, I'm not putting in yet, just because they would just diffuse way too much. I'm going to allow some darker stippling. stippling. Here's where part of that dead tree will come up. We have the living tree over here and he's got all this foliage and he's got some branches which I started putting the idea in but I really want to hold off in the wet and wet stage and these will soften some too while it's wet there that actually be a good time for a dry off and then play around on top of that let's see 23 minutes 24 minutes I'm gonna pause the camera we'll do a dry off and then we'll explore across on top of that all right we're relatively dry so I'm just gonna get into it let's grab the number four rigger and uh, i'm not too worried about that background one so let's put this guy in this one we have prepared the shadow for And this is one of those kind of trees, bushes that has just so much shooting up from it. I think years ago I watched a video of um, Ido, and he had put a tree like that in. I don't recall if there's a, a trick 
putting them in quicker. But we'll just kind of create our upright strokes. I wonder if this is where, like the one instance for me, where an expensive uh, squirrel brush would be helpful just to get a whole bunch in without having to dip back and forth. And there's another one that comes up behind the closer tree that I'm going to put in. I'm just going to put the background in now. Roland Hilder, his trees, I really love the way you put them in. I had bought a, a book of his, and he's deceased. But the book that I had didn't really have great detail on that. I think maybe one of his other books do or did, but I have not acquired one of those. And within the watercolor Fast and Loose, um, the Ron Ranson Facebook page that I help admin. There's you know, people who really achieve those trees well. So right in here, there's kind of a ridge, and I'll put that drawn in. I think I mentioned that at the beginning. It kind of comes up. In fact, I have this mop. We can do that axe brush that I was talking about. Got some quick textures in there. And a big old dead one. Or I wonder what the term is for when a tree just loses all its leaves for the, for the winter. We got the number four, it's pretty heavy and thick. I think it being heavy and thick, it comes more alive due to the trees behind it. That's what's taking place. So we don't have, so tonality wise, it's very dark, but that'd be easy to view it as a flat object, but the tones around it help it change. Once again, we got a lot of little branches coming off. I'm curious if a lot of painters would sit there and have just a branch putting in section. I do recall Mr. Henry Lee, the gentleman that I learned. Um, Chinese brush elements from having said in a video that I guess there was a quote that trees would take 10 days rocks would take four something like that there. We'll drop down to the foreground. A little two clumps. Now the drawing that I'm referencing was done in charcoal. I don't know the original size of the painting, the drawing, it doesn't say, what does it, well, I don't want to navigate away right now, but it is something, and the details he achieved are amazing. So I'm essentially creating a birch tree right here. Just those dots running alongside it, following the 
contour, thinking of it as a cylinder coming up. Let's look at these intertwined trees. So you can see how these bristle brushes, the oil brushes, will put pigment down way different than our other brushes. And I had mentioned earlier how they're kind of dry brushy, but a difficult dry brush. Let's see. Get a little bit of water in there. And one of the things that has me thinking about the dry brush and different approaches is um, Andrew Wyeth. Um, not much really seems to be out there information wise about his approach, but it was a uh, dry brush and it was um, egg tempera. There's one article I found it through uh, wetcanvas.com and there's an Italian gentleman I think studying the works of Andrew Wyeth and he came up with an approach himself and one thing that I took away from that which I'm not using here was um, apparently the fact that Andrew Wyeth would really kind of scrub, tear in, and have holes through some of his paintings in some spots. So I adopted some experiments with more uh, razor blade usage. And I think around that time is when Q-tip exploration started. Because with the Q-tip, I can really go in scrub out some light reflections. I'll come back. This is kind of Rudy Ridge rock face. I think it's easier to get these isolated textures for me with this brush. Hmm. Looks pretty cool through the uh, the camera. Let's see. Foliage. grab the number four. There's the shadow here. The shadow, he made it really difficult. The shadow falls from this tree, the trunk, up, up alongside, and then out <laughs> along this rock. That's just really crazy. Let's see if I can get the axe stroke. tree comes out in front tonality wise. That's another thing too, just to see how um, artists lay the different objects on top of each other and how they can differentiate with, um, with tones to do that. A 
And right back here, there's some light trees coming up. I don't want to write off that apex of it. That's a no-no. We have a few ideas of trees coming up behind it. Usually when I, I paint, you'll note that I will uh, do the background first and work my way forward. So definitely a different approach again. This is that guy that bends towards us and bends away. He's got a whole bunch of little twigs and branches coming off of him. Still wet and wet, so I may have to revisit this spot. Well, wet over here now because of what I put in. I use it for my dry brush. There we go. There we go. Just putting in some texture. It does kind of start smearing a little bit. for bulk, easy, quick, mass texture. For 40 minutes, this is coming up pretty good. And we're learning a lot, and that's the purpose. Especially if you feel like you're stuck in a rut. Looking for a heavier application. Mentioned earlier how the darker, closer tree really works well with those background trees. Could even texture it a little bit like it has in the picture. We can put our fisherman in. So he's sitting right here. We got a 
light wash for his pole. Amy, let's not work. knock stuff over, bud. Hold on a second. All right. I might fix up that fishing pole in a bit, but just trying to work on the bigger picture. The textures, the values. dry brushy with this guy. beneficial to actually grab a Chinese brush. All right, I have a Chinese brush. I've got a hand me fur everywhere. Come on, bud. Hold on. He really wants into my lap, so let's bring him up. All right, so I have this egg brush, I believe. They'll call it wolf hair, but it's really weasel I think there's a um, mistranslation that happens with those brushes let's get a lot of water on it pull the water out let up the sides Purring up a storm, Hammy. I love you too, bud. scary marks we can make with it, get it all I have to hold him up because he's leaning towards the table this was definitely a fun one definitely a lot learned, a lot taken away. Usually these studies are done in pen and ink, pencil, but I think it's something we can add to the rotation if you all would like. Just let me know down below. And if you enjoy these videos, I have the Patreon linked and I would love if you joined in and supported from there. Thank you to everybody that supports. 
I also have links down below to the various printings of my book. So thank you for supporting living artists. And as always, you're welcome to follow along with anything that I do. And sign your own name to anything that you do when you follow along. I think I'm gonna displace Hammy off my lap. Go, bud. Let's see if there's anything we need to do with the bottom of this tree, which I think we do right here. Here, that just helps go into place. And dry it off and we'll be done all right there we have it a study of a pond with a fisherman along the river main with aldolf Appian. thank you for watching i hope you all have a great day